we can start with the introductions and I'll help Adam to get okay. in. Three, three, eight, nine, three, one. Uh, so William, you're up. Yeah. So good evening, good morning, good afternoon. And I'll cover it just at the end. Good night. <laughs> don't drop, don't anyone drop off to sleep because it ain't bedtime yet. Uh, but it, it is just after five o'clock here in, in Aberdeen in Scotland in the UK. So I think we'll go around and get to know everybody, find out where everybody is and find out what time it is with everybody. So I'll start with Marcus. Hi, everybody. I'm, I'm here in the sunny Finland, as you can see. Always the same picture, but uh, everything is fine. I'm very, very eager to, to hear about music beyond all borders from all walks of life and, uh, and waiting for the festival as well. Thanks. I apologize if I pronounce your name wrong. I'll pick Kevin. Would you like to introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? I picked the wrong time to be chewing gum. How rude of me. Hi, everyone. My name is Kevin O'Brien. I am one of the music facilitators over at Musical Intervention. I work very close with Adam Christofferson. He invited me to this meeting via Facebook. And I figured I'd pop in just to get like a, just to get to know everyone involved. Like this is like a big opportunity, even if we are miles apart. So. Did I say miles? I mean, e con you know, countries, eons. Okay. Um, we record music. We write music. We host open mics every Thursday night. Even with this uh, pandemic, we've been able to host live streams of concerts and even archival footage. So that's been incredible, to say the least. We are located in New Haven, Connecticut, and we've pretty much been getting in touch with a lot of organizations such as with several schools, um, outreach programs, and we go out into the community to put on incredible shows when we see fit. I'm sure right. when Adam gets here, he'll definitely yep. say more than I could. So who, who's, I wonder who's next. Tim, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about yourself? Um, nothing much to say. Hello, everybody. I'm from Finland. Great. Jen, do you want to go next? Sure. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Jen O'Brien. I am in Loch Lunas in Scotland, which is a wee village outside of Glasgow. And it's sunny, which is unusual. And I help to run, I'm co-founder of Music Broth, which is Scotland's musical instrument library. Um, we have been part of Music Beyond All Borders. We organised the instruments that went across to the Belfast Conference um, on mental health last year. And yeah, so we've got about 1,400 instruments where we are, and we also do workshops, in, and we're doing a lot of online stuff at the moment. So that's us. Pia, do you want to go next since you're on your daily walk? You forgot to unmute yourself. Okay, now I've un yeah, I wanted to know whether you would <laughs> unmute me or whether I would do it. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm Pia. I'm also in Helsinki. It's uh, just after 7 p.m. Well, I don't know what to say. I've been with No Labels, No Walls since the beginning, and uh, I've done all kinds of things, and um, I'm part of the furniture, I suppose. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this evening. Thanks. I see we have a rather, we'll come back into what can only be a rather bald, non-ginger, baby looking face. Alistair, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us how that accident happened this week? Oh, I tell you the harshness of William Ray. <laughs> Just as well I can him and I kind of slap him from here. Um, so yes, uh, we had a we had a feel good Friday event on Friday, um, which was like a hosted web chat, inclusive web chat. And William's been at me for a while to to shave off my beard um, and to celebrate the end of lockdown. So uh, so I went for the full the full all over shave. Uh, <laughs> so I'm from sunny Aberdeen. No need for a virtual background. Look at the sunshine and the beautiful trees at the back. Um, uh, just. Really pleased to be here. Looking forward to the music tonight. 
And next to Alistair, since he's laughing and uh, he's my next victim, once we're out, completely out of lockdown, I'm sure he'll shave his head off, Keith. Yeah, well, um, yes, I'm Keith Etherington from In Control Scotland um, in very sunny Glasgow, in a, in a very warm attic with sunlight streaming through. But I've not been inside this weekend. I've been away camping, but only in the back garden. But it just shows you how much good fun you can have without having to go very far. Thank you, Keith. Um, I think I've got it right. Suze, I think I've got it right. Sorry if I've got it wrong. Hi, do you mean Suvi? Or... Yes, <laughs> okay. Suvi, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> Language is not, okay. my, not my best skill. <laughs> yeah, that was great. So my name is Suvi and I'm in Helsinki. And last year I was making this first festival here in Helsinki. And actually I, I should be now in Edinburgh. Scotland, but on holiday. So, but Helsinki is good also. <laughs> Very shiny day here. And I think we'll go to last next. Do you mean me? Yes. Yeah, it's Lasse. You uh, Lasse. the A too. Uh, I'm fine. I'm also in Helsinki, Finland, and I'm cooperating with Markus. And I was also creating the last year's festival here in Helsinki. And I have been kind of a back background worker in the uh, No Labels, No Walls since July last year. And I'm looking forward to what this summer and autumn will bring to us all. Okay. Um... And I think I'll go to the person that's next to me on screen, and that's Rukov. Yes. Um, it's been a sunny day here in Helsinki, and uh, I went to a library for the first time. You can spend time there, and uh, went to cafeteria and done some news music already today, and uh, mm, going for looking forward to a nice meeting. Nice meeting. And I apologize if I get this one wrong, but I will go to Pavlo next. I think I got it wrong completely there. Uh, do you mean uh, Paola? No. Yeah, sorry. Okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, I am Paola, also in Helsinki, uh, 7 15 p.m. And um, I am from uh, Catalisti, uh, an association of transcultural artists. I think I saw some of you before. And of course, uh, we were also in the first edition of the festival. So, yes. I'll go to v VR or Vin next. Uh, Virve, you mean me? Yes, right? sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry about these difficult names. <laughs> yeah. I'm Virve, I'm from Finland, Salo, and one, I'm one of the organizers of European Conference on Mental Health. And uh, last year in Belfast, the Music Beyond All Borders gathered there and they organized some great workshops where they practically from zero um, record, recorded two songs, which are quite uh, good, actually. Um, I think you may have seen the document that Adam Adam and Trevor made from this conference. But yeah, I'm looking forward to see what's, what they are up to next. And I'll go to Peter next. Yes, hello. My name is Peter and I'm from Sweden. I work at a place called Dramalogen, which is, which is culture workers working with the culture for, in social uh, ways, various ways. Uh, and it's uh, nice to see you all. Um, I'm uh, happy and uh, yeah, it's good. Rico, for instance, very nice to see you. It was uh, a long time ago. So, uh, great. Yeah, nice to see you too. Thank you. Yeah. And I will go to Adam next. Forgive me, forgive me. I had some technical difficulties. So, since you had some technical difficulties, Adam, we're just introducing ourselves and saying where we're from. Adam Christofferson over here at Connecticut, United States, uh, founder, director of musical intervention and uh, co-founder of the beautiful Music Beyond All Borders family. Okay, I will go to Natalia, I think, next. I think I've got it right. 
It's, it's Neasley. Neasley, are you there? Hi, good morning, everyone. <laughs> Hi, good morning. My name is Neasley. I am living in Los Angeles. And I just came in from a run, so <laughs> I'll be back with you in just a second. Good to be here. Um, who have I not been to? Oh, there's uh, uh, Elizabeth who just Elizabeth. Joined. Elizabeth, can you hear us? Oh, she might be getting on. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, Cindy. Thank you. Cindy. Oh, Cindy. 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 Yes, I've yes. missed it. Cindy. <laughs> sorry. Hi. I'm sorry I'm late. Zoom wouldn't open up. I had to start, close everything up and reboot and everything. It wouldn't open up. So here I am. I'm from Espo, Finland. Well, I'm from Maine, actually, USA, but I live in Espo, Finland. So, hi. <laughs> And how can I forget our lovely two hosts up in the corner? Yeah. Who are who are unmuting yeah. and reminding me of names when I'm struggling. No, 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 don't worry. Uh, you're doing great. Um, so yeah, Michael and Medi Strindberg Laboratory Theater Company, when there used to be theater, Joe, uh, but uh, hopefully it'll open up again very soon. Uh, we are in Los Angeles. We're in Los Angeles. I'm originally from Finland, and last year we were in Finland to do the No Labels, No Balls That's Festival. That's right. We were there. And then, unfortunately, uh, we have to leave the lovely Finland. And I'm, come back to LA with yeah, Kirsty. Which is good too, sometimes. But. <laughs> Thanks. Good to hear you. Good to be here. So, I think since everyone's here, I think I will ask Adam to tell us a bit about the music mm -hmm. invention in the USA and about music, be music beyond all borders. Thank you so much, William. And hi, everyone. It's good to see you all. Marcus, uh, it's amazing you could play. Is that a golf course? It looks great. Anyways, um, yeah, sorry again, I had, I don't know, it was very weird, like, Zoom experience. I had to, like, uninstall it and then reinstall it. Very weird. But anyways, um, I'm really, really glad to be here. Um, I worked pretty hard on this music video this morning to show you guys. I racked my brain, and I was wondering, William, if I could kind of show this video before I got into yeah. it. You guys want some music? Yeah? Yeah. get some music going. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, let me, uh, let me... If you don't mind, just maybe make me a host so I could share the screen. Um, so this song uh, I wrote some time ago, and uh, it was during the beginning. Thank you so much, William. It was during the beginning of, um, you know, the, the lockdowns and, and the pandemic that, that's going on. And, um, and I was really moved by all of the work that people are doing in the hospitals. And so after writing the song, I invited some of my friends from Music Beyond All Borders and Jen, I see you. And um, uh, yeah, Marcus uh, Rovio, he is in Finland, uh, Kukunori, and uh, he played some drums and I had some other friends uh, join in on this song. And we were able to go beyond all borders to, to make this song. So please enjoy, I'll share it right now. There we go. Enjoy. Thank you for being a star. It cut my sound. Yeah, same for me.
Yes, uh, I guess it's better to. Ah. say i loved watching peter listen with those pink headphones it was beautiful adam yes william thank you can i ask if that video could be emailed to marcus who's got everybody's email address and could share it with everybody if you're okay with that because sure, yeah. i know it cut out for some folk and was glitching for some people i think so i don't know if folks maybe want to watch it later when we're not on zoom and if adam's okay with that yeah, that was the world premiere right there. I'm gonna, uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna upload it and then I'll give it to you, Marcus, uh -huh. and you'll be all set to run with it. It's an inspiring thing, you know. And, and you guys had mentioned, uh, you know, there's some lockdowns going on and and other pressing issues that are going on around uh, our country. Um, and so, that's a feel good uh, song for you know the work that people are doing in the hospitals. And there's more songs to be written for other things that are going on in this world. Um, so to, to move on, musical intervention um, is something that I've dreamt of. Uh, so I come from um, an interesting background where my mother has uh, paranoid schizophrenia. My father is a Vietnam veteran with alcoholism. Uh, and my uncle is Michael Bolton, the singer. And so I had this very strange reality uh, going from uh, living with no money uh, and living in uh, state assisted living with my mother to going to like huge concerts with my uncle Michael. And so music was always a big part of my life. And I discovered drums early on at eight years old and then uh, poetry in high school. And then I started writing songs um, in 2002 when I graduated high school. And that was the beginning of really finding uh, my space in life uh, and creating music and having an anchor to life, getting away from drugs and all the way from problems. And so I pursued that and then I started to go to college and I got a degree in recreation therapy and uh, started working at the inpatient psych hospital at Yale New Haven Hospital. And it was at the child psych hospital that I got a chance to help other kids write and record original music. And I began to see that it was pretty impressive that other people could experience the same thing that I experienced within myself, which is finding themselves in a whole new way within music. I started to do uh, th this service called Musical Intervention with a variety of other populations. And it was in 2015 that I had just finished doing a lot of work with the homeless and finding out that there was nowhere to go that was uh, you know, productive and very few places that they were welcomed to go. And so I had an opportunity to open up the space uh, in New Haven. It's 2,300 square feet. I don't know how that relates to the metric system, but um, the, it's a beautiful space that has a performing arts uh, stage. It has a recording studio. It has workshop areas and a coffee shop. We sell records and it's a very welcoming space. And it was right off the bat when I opened up the door that people came and felt home there. And it's been unbelievable experience uh, for so many years now. 
Um, we have not unfortunately been open um, because of the risks to the population. Um, and so we are doing some work here. Oh, I just noticed Kevin O'Brien is here. So Kevin O'Brien is one of our music facilitators at Musical Intervention. So hi, Adam. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> Good to see you. In a minute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you might have saw Kevin playing the keyboard there on the, uh, mm -hmm. the song. And uh, Kevin is there uh, well, when we were open on a very regular basis, and we would um, provide uh, recording capabilities and, and um, a welcoming environment to people who often don't have that accessibility, don't even have access to a recording studio or a way for somebody to capture their ideas. And so it's been really phenomenal. I mean, we have so much music and so much talent that we've been able to cultivate within our community. Um, I mean, it's astonishing the talent that lies dormant and unheard just strictly because of financial problems or psychological issues, barriers, things like that. A lot of the work that I do outside of um, the headquarters, it's mainly an outgrowth of the work that I do in inpatient psychiatric settings. Uh, I work with Connecticut Mental Health Center and I work at a um, Connecticut Valley Hospital, which is uh, a prison setting for the criminally insane. And also another place where amazing um, people have are lying dormant and their talents are lying dormant because there's no accessibility to uh, share their music and their and their story with people. And it was uh, at an international symposium at Yale that I met Frank Riley. And Frank Riley is a phenomenal, phenomenal person. From the, He was from the Scottish Recovery Network. I don't know, he's a Facebook uh, phenom right now. I don't know exactly what he's doing. I, I know that he's, uh, he's making a big difference in Scotland. And uh, he introduced me to Marcus and Marcus to Peter and Peter to Jen. And we've gotten a chance to really develop this Music Beyond All Borders effort and find each other uh, in Belfast, thanks to Verva. Uh, we had the time of our lives getting a chance to uh, do some workshop at the uh, European Conference on Mental Health. And uh, yeah, the, it continues. The ball keeps rolling, even though we don't get a chance to physically be in the same room with uh, a lot of the people we work with. We're still running groups online with schools and uh, we are beginning to meet in public in open spaces um, to record one-on-one -on -one with people. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much for that, Adam. It was very, very interesting. Does anyone have any questions before we move on to discussing how music beyond all borders could participate in no no labels no walls and we are one festival on the 19th of september 2020 if you raise your hand or use the reaction buttons adam if you want if you change the host back to uh me or william then i can unmute people you have to if you because you're the host now so if you want to change it back to me then i can unmute riku because i think he had a question riku had a question keith i think so keith hand up yeah I just, I'm not the host. He's got a. Um, mm -hmm. I think you can you can reclaim the host. Oh, I can. Mm hmm Should be a button that says reclaim host. Where is it, Manny? Take back what is yours. Take it back. Yeah. <laughs> reclaim the streets. <laughs> I can't. I can't. It's like Riku. Can you unmute yourself? You had a question. I. I, can, I yeah. Know. Here I am. All right. Yeah. Uh, I, I just wanted to ask um, about that area there in um, where you live in, when you can uh, you know, share people and uh, sell your records and uh, all that kind of stuff that you told about. Uh, when you're uh, assuming it to open again, First of all, Rico, I, I miss your music so much. I love hearing it. I love your voice Thank and you. your songs. Thank you. You are so good too. <laughs> Stop. Um, so yeah, we have some strict uh, guidelines of opening up uh, to the public, um, especially you know being in a downtown area. Um, we're the government's opening up um, in waves, and so. Um, there are a lot of strict procedures that we need to have in place 
and that takes personnel to you know be responsible for cleaning at a i mean it's a kind of a large space too so we're starting to you know kind of come up with different ideas instead of allowing more you know about five people in at one time we would have to move instruments into different sections of the space so we're trying to get creative and allowing people to have i mean a, a large more than six feet distance uh and also order i also wanted to mention um with regards to that so we um, we were accepted for this federal uh, funded grant to study songwriting and music on folks who have auditory hallucinations and the, how it impacts the symptom. And we still haven't even got started because as soon as we were getting started, everything got closed down. And uh, so we've been collaborating and trying to figure out uh, ways to do it. And one way that we're um, beginning to discuss uh, some of you might know that they sell these uh, vocal isolation booths. They're kind of big squares and they're made out of basically foam. And um, we're thinking, because the idea is uh, sing, it's called sing, songwriting in a group. And um, we're going to take, or at least we're, we're um, proposing that we take five of them are seven because there's seven groups and we set up five of them in a circle and there's a glass piece that you can look through and so there would be isolation booths and um but we would all be in the same space and still see each other and hear each other in real time and maybe even feel each other's energy in some capacity and um so yeah we're trying to get creative about ways especially regarding singing because you're pushing quite a bit of air out and um, you know, we just have to watch out that that doesn't get into the to the wrong nose. But that's a, that's a great idea. Songwriting in a booth you have there. It's uh, it should be great. Yeah, right. Isolate total isolation with each other. Sounds like my mind. And P, uh, Pia. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I had a question. Hi. Thanks. That sounds really interesting. Um, I was just wondering, can anybody come and sing with you or do you have to have a diagnosis of sorts in order to, to sing with you or how does it work? How do you get your people or are those people that you work with, are they in the places that you work in? Thank you, Pia. Yeah, um, so the beautiful thing about the space is... Um, so I, I do meet a lot of people in the inpatient settings and, you know, and, and outpatient groups. And so um, they know what we're doing and they get an open invitation to come, of course, uh, because it's open to the public. Uh, what's really interesting about the space is non-clinical. So it's a different approach when they're walking in. They're not, nobody's signing anything when they're walking in. It's just a, a, an open space to make music. Um, and so being in a downtown area on a main road uh, and having like records outside and music kind of playing outside and people gathering, people tend to just find their way in. And uh, it's a beautiful mixture of all types of people uh, with and without diagnosis. Um, but yeah, we still do get referrals and we get agencies that utilize our space during off times. Um, like we're closed on Monday and uh, on Monday uh, we run a group with uh, young adult services from one of our local uh, mental health providers. Um, and then a lot of the people that come there also come during the week and mingle and make music and collaborate with the general population, which is a great way to, to live. So it's true, no labels, no walls, basically. Nice. Exactly. I think Keith, you had a question. Yeah, I was just gonna ask Adam, how we put together that song that you played is just there. What was the, what was the process that you got that you did that got that together like that? Uh, so we, we experimented earlier uh, with the Music Beyond All Borders song that uh, the fellow in the lower right middle section, uh, Jeremiah wrote uh, called Keep, Keep the Keep Peace. Exactly. Thank you. Keep the Peace. And that was our first time. Um, and Peter and Marcus and all, I mean, geez. I feel like everybody got involved there. And um, so the idea is you start with a song um, for, for these two songs, they were already created. So Jeremiah and I had wrote, writ that, wrote, written that song years past and um, we thought it was a good time to put it together. And so 
we started with the basic track, which is the guitar and vocals, uh, along with a metronome to lock it in place. And I believe we started sharing that with um, the different musicians and facilitators um, that were able to record their sections and also videotape it at the same time. And all the videos and the audio tracks got brought back to me and I was able to kind of edit it, put it together in that way. This one in particular, I wrote in a very similar way. And so mainly people are using their own uh, DAW system, digital audio recording system. And um, what I'm finding now out of necessity is that there's many other ways to get things done too. And so there's one website called uh, BandLab. I know there's plenty of them, but BandLab has been able, I've been able to collaborate with people online without them having to have a Macintosh or they could do it straight from any, any Android or Apple phone. And so they can add their vocals onto it, um, you know, using headphones and a little microphone that's attached to it. Um, and we've been able to, to kind of put songs together that way also. And so, you know, people are, are singing and then we just kind of put the video together. Okay. So I think we'll have a discussion now about how music beyond all borders could participate in the no label. Mind you, we've, we've covered that, I suppose. Number four. And, and we've done four. We've killed two birds, one stone, I think. I could be wrong. The host will remind me if I'm wrong or right. You can maybe keep those birds flying a bit longer. Yeah. I think I think the big thing yep. is maybe we can ask people to um, like because you mentioned singing you know having a group from like all over the world maybe we can think of an event on no labels for the festival that kind of takes that you know we can do a new song or maybe have even more people collaborating maybe in real time um, just to show unity I don't know what you guys are all thinking or what you're all thinking but Something like that, more specific, just some ideas. Keith? Marcus, Marcus, in that CD email, when you sent out about today's session, there was something, wasn't there, in there about creating a big, a big sound and a big band and a big, a big, <laughs> lots, lots of people from different places getting involved in doing something. Yes, <clears throat> we, we can invite people to, to songs. Uh, this COVID time has release technology that perhaps you have seen a lot of um, choir videos this kind of uh, technical solutions how to join a lot of people together live playing is 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 quite hard due to the fact that the internet connections are delayed but all sorts of other production means where where we are collecting for example pieces to create original piece for the festival is something that we can begin already now and collect things as we go or we can do it at the event uh, at the festival in, in shorter time but I, I, I really like the idea of Music Beyond All Borders inviting people to collaborate with music. I, I guess that the, the, the task is coordinating all this material and put it in, in place but I, I, I think we can find these persons as well. What do you think, Jen and Kevin, Peter? Yeah, I agree. I mean, Adam's done a great job coordinating that song. So, you know, it, it was down to him. We submitted all our wee pieces to Adam and he put it all together. So it can totally be done in advance or, you know, or live, whichever is people's preferences. I think the advanced thing helps if people haven't got kit that records, you know, live or has technical issues live. Um, so maybe a bit of both would be good because it would um, rule out any issues people might have on, on the time if they couldn't participate for some reason, they'd still get to put their input in ahead of the time. So, hi, for sure, doable. I want to add, because um, I know Adam was just talking about how we were able to get in contact where our space is open to people that don't have access to recording equipment. Um, ever since this lockdown, I've been able to get in reach with several friends, collaborators of mine, some of them, before they even was considered by buying a mic, one was able to send her vocal tracks via her phone. She has a decent iPhone, and I was able to 
she sent over like the wave file i was able to mix it in we've been able to like keep it going and just non-stop so i think regardless whether you have a fancy macbook fancy microphone you know expense you know does the gist does the gist but i don't think that should be like a restraint or a restriction for everyone that works working with us i think we should make it open anyone that's willing to put in the effort and the time yeah what i would what i would want is if i could get is because we're a theater company but if you have like a like a couple sentences with the the project that like once the ideas are formed then we can reach out to our contacts like the jail without uh jail guitar doors they have um they go into the jails with guitars and prisons um there's a lot of other groups that we know of that we could maybe get them to join in on whatever you guys are going to be creating i i would just need a little bit about it so i could send the emails out i just like to say i think it only starts with a song a gathering and then a song and uh, maybe we can all collaborate lyrically uh, in creating something for this next um, gathering in September. And that way, you know, we still have a little melody going and then everybody kind of gives their input. And I mean, judging by the title, there's quite a bit to say. Um, I'm, just, I'm just wondering, how would it practically look like? How, how would it work? Would you, I mean, now, let's say somebody wants to sing. Where do they get the song from? I mean, how does it work? So currently, if we had taken this hour and I took out my guitar and we all wrote a song together, um, the next stage would be to record it. And um, what we're doing now, kind of what Kevin was talking about, is we would, uh, right now, the best solution is putting it on, that we're, that we're used to, is, is putting it on BandLab and whoever has a cell phone or a computer would be able to download that program and record easily onto it. It's a fairly easy system to navigate. I'm just trying to understand, I mean, is that happening then on that day or is it happening before so it's ready on the day or of that festival? And how would people find you? I, I mean, how, you know, that is, that is basically, um, how do get people, how do people get know, to know about it? If they wanted to take, you know, I mean, sorry guys. I mean, I'm just trying to understand because I'm still, for me, it's like, whoa, how is this going to work with the festival online? I was thinking that that would be an, uh, an, an addition to the festival as, but I know Marcus was talking much more about some kind of live collaboration, live, uh, integration with each other live um, and and the only way that I know how to do it like on zoom if I started playing guitar and we all wanted to sing along everybody would have to mute themselves and you'd have that opportunity to kind of join in with us live but uh, your voice wouldn't be heard except for the main facilitator and so that's one way that that zoom is used um, they're doing dance parties and stuff like that. You just uh, can't necessarily auditor uh, uh, contribute that way. It, it has to be done in advance and, and you can maybe sing along at home, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. I didn't hear the answer now because I was checked out. But anyway, um, I'm, I'm sure I'll get the answer after the meeting. Yeah, I, th I think it's a great idea because LA, like I said, if once um, the... The, the compositions formed, then, you know, we can start kind of sending the links out to that app that you're talking about and getting people to, you know, record it and, you know, compiling this, the video. And I think um, another thing what I excite about the festival, we kind of talked earlier about it, is that we can get a lot of new people because it's virtual. Um, so we can get a lot of people maybe from different places, maybe that we don't have an, uh, an outreach yet. You know, so I, I would be looking forward to keep talking with people maybe that we don't know right now, getting them to, you know, join in as a way to introduce the No Labels, No Walls and also what all the work that you know, everyone's doing.
I also think that the nice way you do, you do things, Adam, that that when people are people are filmed, so everybody kind of uh, are joined in 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 the music video uh, to the song. It's it's also a very nice way to get people to spread it uh, uh, later on. So so mm. maybe maybe this is some kind of two step two step uh, space rocket uh, where where the, <laughs> where the song is is being made. People are watching it and filming themselves themselves. And then the the stage number two is where everybody is on, like very very small. Um, mm. right. <laughs> but that's the festival part. I mean, can I, I say? Yeah. I just um, was thinking, uh, could I take a responsibility to start that live song by um, sending a little music clip? by example to uh, Michael's or Marcus's uh, uh, mail and, and then everybody get the uh, software you need to work that and uh, put it there and uh, to start. How does it sound like? What do others think? I certainly would welcome that idea. Yeah, welcome everybody to uh, jo hmm. join the, uh, the, making this song about uh, mu music beyond borders yeah so when we're when we're watching like things on tv and it shows like tons of people on the screen and they're all singing at the same time it might seem live but it, it's not um and so they're they're pre-recording it and editing it and presenting it as if it's live during a live discussion um however i did get i did get a heads up that there is a website called Jam Kazam. I'm gonna share it in the chat um, to everyone. Jam Kazam, and that uh, requires musicians uh, and participants uh, to there it is to have an Ethernet connection, so it can't be over the Wi-Fi. Uh, but apparently, that doesn't have any lag for live sessions. Now I have to. We're going to have to do some more research into it to see whether or not these sessions can be broadcasted at the same time. Um, but that could potentially open up an opportunity for live performances from a group of people uh, in different spaces without any laser lags. But if there's any help from me, I can be here to use. Sure. I was just wondering. I was just wondering, would there be possible for us to maybe do record some stuff in groups, sort of together? So, like a bunch of us to put some bit together, one bit together, and we could kind of layer it up over time, you know? So, like, because it might be too much for to get everybody to, you know, to get everything right, but to do to have a plan and for maybe a few of us mm -hmm. to do one bit, you know, just so we could layer it up. Just a thought. So, because you want to do it with me, you don't want to be on your own. That's what it is. <laughs> I suppose it might also, I mean, depending on how it goes with COVID and whatever and how people are allowed to meet up in public, um, maybe then it would be possible to get people together and sing together and make, um, you know, play some song maybe that has been online, um, you know, to have a kind of hybrid um, festival. And, and to to record that and to bring that online or yeah in case that it is okay to sing together outside for example does that make sense has anyone got like any a, on you go like a flash sorry. mob <laughs> no sorry i just <laughs> to have a flash mob ah, yeah that's a good idea has anyone got any final questions because we're just about up to our hour we're five, we've got another five, another five minutes left, I well, think. I was just wondering is who's, uh, Adam, are you going to be, since it's going to be music, are you going to be then the key point, like coordinating that specific event or what, what's the next step? So, you know, we can start kind of building this for September. Um, I think it was really wise to say that we should do this in groups um, and that we can, uh, split the group and do a certain amount of people in preparation for it to get at least three or four facilitators to um to team up together i mean i can help with la 
So if, if I just get that information as far as, you know, like a couple of sentences, because again, I, I mean, we're, you know, we haven't done this before. And then I can get some people from Los Angeles and that group. Thing. So I can definitely be the LA group coordinator. We can be that. So I don't know. I would just need that information obviously sent to me by somebody uh, for the, uh, so I can get, the, you know, get that coordinating going. I have a question. Is there a theme um, for the festival? Marcus? Uh, yes, to, this year we are collaborating with our friends from Scotland with the We Are One community. And uh, we just had a, had a talk that, that there's, our topics say so much that there's a, a, a lot of things inside, no labels, no walls, and We Are One. But we had the idea of, of open up some, somehow uh, thinking about uh, how what's the positive coming out of all these experiences during this year. I was asking because if there is a theme and then everyone who is contributing is focusing on that theme, it would allow people to bring out their creativity from their own perspective, right? Cultural, whatever but everybody's working within the confines of a thing. So the message, whatever the message is, then that everybody's sending out the same message, but in their own quote unquote language and their own quote unquote musical language. Hmm. Keith, am I right in thinking that we are one had a theme this year? Yeah. What, what, what was, I was going to say, what was that again? <laughs> the theme was we are one. That that is the that is the theme that we that we are one, that we are all equal, and we are trying to make the world more equal. And we're looking yeah. to where we can people can be included. That's it, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we but are, that's we are, quite broad. We can all contribute. So that um, it's quite broad. Right? It's very broad. Yeah, very it's broad. Extremely yeah. broad. And so it would be better if there is a. So you've got theme, but you have all these sub themes under that. Okay, that's we are one. But yeah, and easily that's what we're doing. So a Marcus should have a um uh Kukunari's gonna be working on a press release uh very shortly. We should have it out soon. Um, but it's gonna have certain days. So it's gonna be Saturday the nineteenth is a big day, but we're gonna have leading up to the festival days, and obviously these action Mondays are a part of that. And in those sub uh in those days, like talking about citizenship. Is one of the themes for one of the days out of the we are one um there's other themes that we're going to be in those days um but we're going to have that hopefully at, at marcus i don't know do you have an update on that for the um i know we're going to be and then we're also going to be having planning meetings starting actually in june developing those themes and that was one of the other things that we're going to be starting this month uh so yeah, but I, we absolutely agree. We have to have specific themes for each day, uh, and and where they fit, you know, where everything fits, and that's what we're that's June's goal, basically. Marcus, do you have anything else to add about that? No, like said that there, uh, there's a, a lot of strength in combining forces, but I I think no labels and no walls. It, it's it's a strong theme in itself, and it 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 shows at the festival, but also it allows us to learn from the We Are One community about their <coughs> themes and, and also uh, joining forces with, with the, all these other networks joining in. But, but uh, certain, certain days will, will have certain themes of, for example, in the Scottish uh, community, we have talked about the seven keys to citizenship as a way to, to go in deeper in, into the meanings of how, how to make citizenship real in, in uh, today's uh, um, world. And uh, these, these themes will, will, will show also in, inside the program. Wasn't it a bit like that all the topics that we have now during those meetings, that they're basically topics for the festival? Wasn't that the idea? initially yes. yes that's right so mm -hmm. these action mondays are teasing each idea so we um the idea is this is that if we only have festival day even if it's two three days there's no way we're going to have the audience 
be able then to continue to take action with us and action on their own. So these Action Mondays are a way for us to start teasing these ideas, joining new people. So we form a community, and that community then can continue after the festival's over and to the next festivals and, you know, all of our work. And that's the whole idea behind it. I mean, at the end of the day, um, if we are online anyway for that festival, I mean, we can pre, I mean, what I'm, what I'm, maybe that has been clear to everyone except me but what i'm just becoming aware of is like okay we have particular dates when we have the festival but we can actually prepare whatever stuff we want to prepare beforehand and then just um make it go live on that day of the festival right yes i mean it is not like we have to weasel around like we did for the festival at audi and everybody has to be there and nobody knows what's going on, but we already can, whoever has something to, to ready to prepare whatever art or talk or thing it might be, can already prepare that beforehand, right? Yeah, like, a, like the yeah. video that you did, <coughs> one thing that's yes. gonna be shown. Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. But basically not on Zoom, but, through the website or whatever so that people actually can see the can see the things like what the problem that we had now again with zoom was that the the sound was cutting out so you know to have links somewhere that people can go to is that am i getting that now or no, I, the <laughs> I believe that i accidentally muted the video while i was no it's it's always a problem. Like any video that we've looked at through Zoom was like cut and whatever. So it's a real pain in the ass. Sorry, excuse my French. To um to watch anything on Zoom, on you know and that's one being of, shared. One of, one of the things we're gonna do. So we have Action Mondays every Monday, um, but what we're gonna start doing is also having festival weekly uh, festival meetings. So talking about the technical side of um, the festival. So unfortunately, because we only have an hour on these Action Mondays and everyone's sitting by their computer, it's hard to do both. Um, so again, in June, we're gonna be going into uh, how we're gonna coordinate the festival, um, what are the specific themes of the festival, et cetera. And that's gonna be a, hopefully on the Sundays. Uh, we'll have that either Sunday or another day, um, aside from the Monday, um, the Monday uh, uh, Action Mondays, and that's the idea as we get closer now towards September, and that's what the, the the plans were before. Okay, I think we're just about at that hour, and I'm sure we're all like me getting a bit of a num bum. Um, Mark, so next time, um, Marcus, do you want to explain what we've got next time? Because it is a, I think it's Michael, and I don't ask me to pronounce the last name, yeah. so I will get it totally wrong from Finland who will present about how creation can come together. Thank you, William, for hosting uh, this evening. It was very nice to, to see all of you. And next Monday, at the same time, at the same link, we will have Mikael Seppala, who is an uh, expert working for the, for the uh, uh, fin Finland's Institution of uh, Independence, uh, and he's an expert in, in, in these kind of things where we create impact together. So he's a networking expert. And we have been talking in, in No Labels, No Walls community that, that how, how to enhance the movement. And Mikael knows uh, quite a bit about movements. So let's uh, welcome Mikael uh, in a week and, and let's join in. To, to talk about how, how we create more impact together. And William, you, now the last hosting is to anoint somebody for next week to be the host. So that's on you, William. I think I will hand the baton further down the, the water uh, and down the river to our good friends, I wouldn't say good friends, to our Glaswegian colleague, Keith, Oh. Um, and Dominic Keith for next week. Hey, good, choice. good choice, William. Very good choice. Uh, uh, last thing, please tell your friends about this. So we are building this up to September. Um, everybody bring one friend. 
Uh, I know Monday mornings are tough for people in Los Angeles, and you know Mondays are tough um, uh, for afternoons for people in Connecticut. But uh, let your friends know about this. Because, you know, we create all this great stuff, content, everything that we do in the next festival, the next uh, everybody's work, bonds, new community, etc. So please tell your friends and uh, thank you so much. Thanks to William, everybody. William. And uh, anything else, William? Nope, that's it. Just want to share the link. Here's the link uh, to the Use Dave the Day video. It's really nice to be here. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you all. You. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Yes, thank you. Thank you.